we're going to bring Pete on and we're going to talk about uh, revenue management, dynamic pricing, how to look at competition uh, and try to figure out what prices that you should, uh, you should be at is what we're going to talk about. So Pete, do you want to, are you ready? Let me see. Hang on just a sec. <laughs> I, I should be. Just had to find some scissors for a little one. I'll help Lillian and you get started, okay? <laughs> All right. Is my mic on, Stacy? Can you hear me? Perfect. All right. So we're going to go over how to make a lot of money, I guess. <laughs> Am I host? Can I share? Does it matter? All right. Hello, everybody. Let me get my screen all set up so we can see the same thing. There we go. All right. <clears throat> so I think Stacy had mentioned earlier that uh, doing all this within Store Edge uh, makes it pretty easy. So uh, that's the way we do it. So we're just going to look at the Blackshear location today because uh, I actually have to update this one uh, so we could do it together. You could see how it actually happens. Uh, she mentioned that she has uh, a VA actually doing the uh, research for us. And that's what this screen looks like here. So uh, pretty simple spreadsheet doesn't have to be, uh, you know, super elaborate or anything like that. It's basically uh, all the storage facilities nearby uh, our subject property. So we're looking at the Blackshear tab down here. And then all the VA does is look around, you know, she search, uh, you know, self-storage Blackshear, whatever she does. Uh, when you do it on Google Maps, you just get this and it's easy enough to just click the website. Uh, sometimes you can actually get the pricing right off the website if they're that high tech. <laughs> sometimes you have to call them to get the, uh, the pricing on there. So that's what she does. Uh, some of them you can't get a hold of like this BWK mini storage, uh, she wasn't able to get any of the pricing over here, but you can see on the easy storage Blackshear puts all this information in here for us. So how far is it from our location address? Do they have a website? Do they have an email address? And then this is the pricing information they were able to get uh, either online or by calling them up. So when you get this information, I just like to update the deal analyzer. Uh, is this sheet and coach accountable? Ah, I'm not sure. We just had it made uh, not too long. It is? Oh, Stacy's saying yes. Oh, oh, this sheet is in coach accountable. All right, so it's in coach accountable <laughs> if you need it. Uh, so what I do, I take these numbers off of this sheet and I just put it right into the deal analyzer and let it do all the work for me. So let me pull that over. Uh, there we go. So along the bottom of your deal analyzer, just look for that competition tab over here. And then you could uh, have all these in here and just update them. Uh, yeah, each month, each quarter, half a year, however long you're reevaluating everything. It'll just all be in here. And then uh, like me, you know, I just saved this as the month. So Blackshear, April, 2022. So you know what you're working with. Next time we update it, you know, I'll just change the name on there. Um, you know, Blackshear, July, 2022 or whatever month it is when we're redoing this. All right, so easy. So actually on this up here, on the line number five, I'll update all our current information. So right now, five by 10 is 45, 10 by 10 is 60, 10 by 20 is 120, and then we have parking over here, 
for 60. Uh, um, from what we were looking at, we couldn't find any comparable parking. That's why we don't have any numbers there. Uh, but over here for like the 10 by 10s of the pricing we were able to get. So we have easy drive, uh, what is it? Easy drive in storage and Augusta Avenue storage. We've got prices for those and then it'll average it out. So we're averaging $59 or $1.18 per square foot on the five by tens. And for me right now, I'm just at 45. So there's definitely room to improve on our five by tens. Uh, 10 by tens, we only have one comparable uh, easy storage in Blackshear. And that's at 55 bucks, which is lower than we are now. <laughs> so that's not good, but we can look over here. The 10 by 15s are going for 57 cents a square foot down here. And uh, usually the smaller the unit, the more you get per square foot. So, you know, the five by tens is getting a dollar eighteen a square foot. Uh, so a 10 by 10 should be getting more per square foot than a 10 by 15. So it looks like uh, we have room for improvement here. We could be at least at 57 cents a square foot, you know, if not 60 or more. Right now we're at 60 anyway. Uh, so that might stay the same depending on what's going on. Uh, when you're calling around, if you get prices online, uh, you have to see if uh, the prices are available all the time or if the prices are available only when there is availability, if that makes sense. So uh, I was just looking at this one last, the drive-in storage. So if you look over here, they don't have any pricing available and uh, they are a storable website. You can tell at the bottom over there. So they must have the option checked that uh, they only display available units. So right now they're not displaying anything. So that lets me know that Easy Drive in Storage Highway Avenue doesn't have any availability. So they're 100% full is what it looks like. So if anybody calls them, they're not gonna have any units available. So that's working in our favor as well because it doesn't really matter how much they're going for. <laughs> you know, if, if we knew how much they were going for, it's not enough because they're 100% full. And same thing here, if they're trying to call around looking for a 10 by 10 unit, they're not gonna be able to find one. Uh, and then if they don't have that availability online, you know, if, if they don't have an online presence, you would just call them up and ask them like, hey, do you have any 10 by 10s available? And if they don't, that's great. Because <laughs> whatever they're renting it for isn't enough. So you can go above whatever they're uh, pricing at because you're the only one with, you know, if you do have availability, you're the only one with availability. Uh, same here, 10 by 20s. Uh, right now we're going at 120, it looks like, and the comparables are 90 bucks, which is only 45 cents a square foot. So already above on that. And we have no parking comparables. Uh, somebody had an eight by five unit. Who was that? Uh, the Highway 84 storage had an eight by five unit which is going for just about 65 bucks. So a dollar 62 a square foot. Uh, so that's good, <laughs> but it is a small unit. Uh, and there's not much availability in the area. So you can kind of toy around with how high you wanna go uh, based on how full you are. So once I know there's not much availability in the area, I have to see where I'm currently at on uh, on how full I am. So I will go into store edge. That's one of these tabs, let's see. <laughs> oh, here we go. All right, so this is store edge. And these are my uh, group classes, five by tens, 10 by tens, 
10 by 20s, and then my parking at the bottom. So the green means it's available. The blue means somebody's in it. If there's a little X, that means we have to do some sort of maintenance on the unit. And then uh, the red ones just mean they're delinquent. So we only have one delinquency. That's good. <laughs> and then, uh, so parking doesn't look like I could really hike the prices up on that because I have a lot of availability. So I probably wouldn't mess with the parking too much now. But everything else, uh, the 10 by 20s, they're all completely full uh, and no maintenance needed anywhere. The 10 by 10s, everything is completely full and I have two uh, units that need maintenance on it. Uh, so it looks like as soon as I'll have availability, uh, they're gonna get full. So I'm not too worried about that. And then the five by 10s, I've got one available and everything else is taken up. It looks like I need repairs on two of them. So yeah, I wouldn't have any qualms about hiking the prices here, even though, uh, you know, if we look here, my 10 by 10s, the next comparable is 55 bucks, but I'm already at 60. But my 10 by 10s are 100% full. So even though I'm already above my comparables, I'm not priced high enough because everybody keeps getting them. <laughs> so we have to f try to find that spot where, uh, you know, we hit about the 90, 92% uh, uh, not vacancy, occupancy. <laughs> uh, say like 8% vacancy is a, a good number to hit because then you have uh, you have a unit for somebody if they really need it. Uh, and then that last unit, I'll usually hike the price on that one, uh, you know, maybe 20% above whatever the market is, just so I keep that available for the people that actually need it. Uh, so there's a few ways we could do that. Uh, so let's manage the empty units for right now. Uh, to do the empty unit price management, you have to go into the corporate settings. So right now we're looking at the facility level. But once we go over to the corporate level, it's here somewhere. I thought I just had it up. There we go. I think we just need to pick Blackshear. All right, so we're in Blackshear now. So this will tell you all the units you have in that location. Uh, just a little bit about each unit here. So total units and group, the five by tens, we have eight, 30 10 by tens. Uh, these 10 by 20s are split up into two different classes. Is uh, some of them have access, have a door, you know, they have two doors, one on the front, one on the back. And then uh, these other ones only have a door on the front. So we split those up into two different groups, but they're the same size and I've been renting them for the same price. Uh, so this will tell you the vacancy in the group. Uh, so we have 12% vacancy here, zero, 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 and then 80% vacancy on the parking. We only have five uh, spaces. So although the percentage is really high, <laughs> it's only four free spaces in that group. All right, uh, days since the last move in average rent. So people may come in at different rates. Uh, so when you have the revenue management set up, some people might come in higher than the street rate or lower than the street rate, depending on how you have it set. But this will give you the average of what's currently filled. So right now our five by tens are averaging 46.30. Our 10 by tens are averaging 61 and a quarter, which is a buck and a quarter higher than our street rate, which, hey, that's good for me. <laughs> so, but that also tells me I need to raise uh, my street rate too. Because if it gets too out of whack, your current tenants, if they're at a rate that's higher than your street rate or your advertised rate, they're going to ask, well, can I just move out and move back in <laughs> and get a cheaper rate? So you, you don't want them doing that. <laughs> and it doesn't make them feel good either. So uh, you gotta be on top of it, just kind of monitor it 
uh, every so often just to make sure they don't get out of whack. I mean, I'm only a dollar and a quarter uh, right here. I mean, if someone throws a stink, I'll just credit them a dollar and a quarter for that month and then raise everyone's prices. <laughs> so it's the same. So, you know, if it's within a couple bucks, you know, you can eat the cost if someone complains, but the the hope is that nobody complains. So stay on top of it and uh, kind of keep everything uh, on track. So right here, uh, 10 by 20s. Uh, let's see, which one is this? I don't remember which one has two doors and which one has one doors, but one, one group is averaging 106 bucks. The other group is averaging 104 bucks, just about. And then the parking is averaging right at 60. So the standard rate per square foot, it'll list it out here. Uh, the current standard rate, so how much the actual unit is. So the standard rate for the five by 10 is right now it's set at 45. And the managed rate is 45. But if we look here on the 10 by 10s, uh, the current standard rate is 60, but the managed rate is 69. So if somebody wanted to move in today, the rate would be $69. But if I remember correctly, we don't have any availability. Uh, yeah, vacancy in group 0%. <laughs> so they wouldn't be able to move in even at that price. Uh, same thing here. We've got 120 bucks standard for the 10 by 20s, but if they wanted to move in today, they'd have to spend 144 bucks uh, to move in because that's the managed rate. Uh, I don't use a web rate, it's just the same as the managed rate. So I, I don't use this column. Uh, that's something you could explore, but it just creates more complexity and I'm all about streamlining things. So everything just goes by the managed rate. <laughs> so you can have two separate rates if you want, but I. I like simplicity, so I just keep everything on the managed rate. Uh, so we could look in one of the managed rate groups. We'll just start at the five by tens. Uh, so this one is not on a managed rate right now. It's just on the standard rate. And this will help uh, show why. So at the very top, it'll start off. Uh, the standard rate is 45, managed rate, occupied units is five out of eight are occupied. So the occupancy is 62%. Uh, Deborah, is your managed rate published on the website? Yes, I, when uh, my managed rate is used everywhere. So you can have a separate web rate for things, I guess. I don't know why. <laughs> for me, it just makes things more complicated. So I, I just use the one rate for everything. So online calling in uh, the integrations with, you know, if we choose to use, uh, spare foot it would just pull that managed rate amount uh, but you can have it pull the web rate if that's something you wanted to do but i like i said i don't like things being complicated <laughs> so uh, right now we're at 62 and a half percent occupied so you could turn on and off the, the active managed rate so i've got it set to automated uh, you could set it to a fixed thing, but I, again, I don't like managing things. So if it can be automated, I will use the automation. Uh, so like the adjustment type, so you can go by a set amount or you can go by a percentage. I go by the percentage. So uh, if I am 76 to 90% full in this group, it's gonna increase the, uh, the rate by 15%. So instead of being $45 up here, once I hit 76% occupied, it's going to go up to 51 and a quarter uh, for the managed, or sorry, 51.75 for the managed rate. Then once I hit 91% occupied, which is my last unit. So in this group, once I reach 91% occupied, I only have one unit left. So from 91 to 100% full, it's going to increase by 20%, which currently is going to be the, the $54 managed rate. So my very last unit of the five by tens, instead of being 45 bucks, would be 54 bucks. So my last unit is always 
uh, the most expensive. And we could see that in uh, the 10 by 20s as well, if we go in here. So the standard rate is 120. And right now the managed rate is 144, right? So uh, right now I've got it from 91 to 100%, it increases by 20%. So my last unit is uh, the most money on there. And then we could check the other rate as well. So from 75% to 100%, it increases by, uh, the price increases by 20% to 144. So my last units, my last units in those are 20% higher. And you could, you could put as many different breaks in there as you want. Uh, so this one has got the two breaks again. So from 90 to 95, it increases by 15%. So I think that's the last three units are going to be 15% more money. <laughs> and then the very last unit, the 96 to the 100% full, is going to be 20% higher. So 72 bucks on there as it as it currently is. So that, that's how you manage the vacant units. So if someone were wanted to move in, this is how they would be charged. It's the occupancy percent which generates the dynamic pricing. Yes. So that it'll tell you here what your percentage occupied is. So the occupancy of the group is 62% right now, 93%, 100 and 100. So uh, it'll go by that. Uh, so this the occupancy here is based off the number of units, not by like the square footage or anything like that. So it's if you have 10 units and you have five of them occupied, you'd be at 50% uh, uh, in that group. So then uh, that's how you could set your managed rate here. So, you know, if, I mean, you, you can put any numbers you want in here. If you're 50% full, you could increase the price by 100% if you wanted. <laughs> so they give you a lot of control over anything. Uh, you, you could do anything in there pretty much. So once your availability starts going down, you, you want to push your limits. You know, if you've got your last unit available, you want to push the limit on how much is that unit worth. Because if you're holding on to one unit, I mean, who cares? Uh, eventually somebody's going to want it or somebody will move out. The price of that group will go back down again and then somebody will move in. Uh, so uh, unless there's a really unique circumstance, uh, you know, it's, it's a good model to go by. Because if you have one available, that's fine. I mean, I've had people call me from a moving truck in front of the gate saying, I need a unit right now. They could care less how much it costs. <laughs> like, they, you know, the sun's going down, it's raining, whatever the case is, they need a unit. And uh, having this all preset up, you know, relieves that stress from you. You know, they're going to, at, you know, why was it so expensive? It's all system generated, guy. You know, I just I just tell you what the system says. Uh, so you know, you you don't have to feel guilty about it. This is just how you set it up. And if they want it, they can have it. If they don't want it, they don't get it. Uh, but I, I do like having that availability for people because multiple times. <laughs> people call us from the gate saying we need something now <laughs> uh, all right so that that's how you would manage the the vacant units so new people coming in that's how you manage that so remember that the last unit i was like it to be you know i'm i've over here i've been choosing 20 percent uh and then the last couple units you know raise it a couple bucks you know five ten fifteen percent something like that uh, just to kind of keep you at that 92% uh, full. Because if people don't want it, somebody moves out, the rate's going to go down, and then they'll move in at the street rate, and you'll still have those available units. There we go. So now we want to manage the people 
that are already our tenants, right? So, uh, and we want to manage uh, the street rate as well. So we, we figured out the dynamic pricing portion of it, but we haven't addressed what it should actually be going for. So when we're looking at the deal analyzer, my five by tens should be going for more money. You know, I'm at 45 bucks right now. Uh, the average is 59. So we could definitely go to 59 bucks for a five by 10, uh, but 60 is a nice round number. So I might go with that. <laughs> so to do that, we go in this five by 10 group. Uh, we should go in a five by 10 group. Oh, <laughs> looking at the wrong screen. Let me go into the settings. Hmm. Storage did a uh, an update last Tuesday, and apparently this help button <laughs> covers the settings button. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we go into the units over here in the settings, and now we'll have the edit button over here. So right now we're at the $45 mark. We're gonna go ahead and raise that up. So we're in the group of five by tens. So the standard rate is 45. I'm just gonna raise that to 60 right here. And then this is where you can control all of the uh, aspects of that group. So you know, it's got a five foot by 10 foot uh, location. You could, if you have multiple floors, you could show what floor it's on. And then you could adjust these amenities. You could write anything you want in here. Uh, so there's drive up access, it's ground level. Uh, one of our facilities has a loading dock on one side and a roll up, you know, traditional roll up door on the other side. Uh, Two door access available front and back. Some of our units have two doors on the same side for some reason. Uh, so I just put all those options in there and then we could better describe what we're selling the tenant. Uh, how big is the door? You know, three foot wide, six foot high. Uh, roll it door, swing door, or no door. Uh, you know, if you have a carport or something like that. Uh, is it fully enclosed or not fully enclosed? Uh, indoor or outdoor access. And then if you have sales tax, uh, like we do in Florida, you would set your sales tax and then you could put multiple different sales taxes on there. Uh, in our Florida facilities, we have the state tax and then we also have local uh, county taxes. So having the two different taxes on there just makes it a little bit easier. If you have facilities, within the same state, but different counties, uh, you could utilize those two different taxes to kind of keep everything uh, easier to manage. All right, so we're gonna save that. So now once it updates, so our new street rate is 60 bucks. It'll take just a, a minute or two to update and then that managed rate will also update. Uh, the 10 by 10s are going for 60 bucks, which doesn't really make sense because that's what our 5 by 10s are going for now. So we're going to have to raise that up a bit. We have 100% full. So uh, let's see, we'll go to our deal analyzer over here. And I'm going to go to my unit mix. So our 5 by 10s. Uh, we're at 45 over here in the after updates section, this orange section over here, I'm just going to put our new prices in there. So we just raised this to 60 bucks, right? So we're averaging a dollar 20 per square foot over here for the five by tens. Let's see, this column here is the 10 by tens. Uh, so we definitely don't want to go over a dollar 20 square foot and we don't want to be where we are now so you know we might want to try 90 in there so we're at 90 cents a square foot and then 
what was our 10 by 20 competition? I don't remember. Let's see. 10 by 20s, you know, they were going for 90 bucks, but we only had one comparison and we're completely full on those. So we should raise the price as well. Oops. So we go back to the unit mix. So same thing here. We don't want to stay at 60 cents uh, a square. Oh, wait, where am I at? I'm over here. Sorry. 90 cents. We don't want to go all the way to 90, uh, but somewhere between the 60 and 90 is where we're going to want to stay. Uh, so we can, what does that do? 150, 160. All right. That doesn't look so bad. <laughs> so with our, where we were at, uh, well, the current and these two are the same right now. So our 100% full, we would have been bringing in 42.60 a month at the at this facility with our current pricing for the the 60, 90, 160 for the five by 10, 10 by 10, 10 by 20s. Uh, we'd be bringing in, oops, uh, 5,800 bucks instead of the 4,200 dollars at at 100% full. So we're we're not going to be 100% full all the time. Uh, right now, I believe this should be up to date with our current occupancy right here. Uh, so it's actually pulling these numbers from uh, the current pricing over here. So that's how that works. So currently we're charging the 4560120. So currently, with our pricing as is, if everybody was paying the same price, we'd be bringing in 37.65 out of a potential 42.60. So we're a little bit under, uh, but we could see what we'd be making with our current income over here. If we just uh, transfer our rates over to the current column. So we would make that 60, we would make that 90, what did I say? That's 160 bucks for the 10 by 20s. And if we go to the number currently filled the green section, if we raised all of our current tenants so that they all have equal pricing and it's it's this new pricing that we created, we'd bring our income up to 5280 over here if everybody stayed and they were all paying the same rate. Uh, so that's how I kind of do that. So we could lose, <laughs> we could lose a lot of tenants and still be uh, at the same income we were at. Uh, I don't know what that percentage is, but we could figure it out another day. <laughs> so here, let me undo those numbers. So yeah, so 37.65 is where we're currently at if they were all paying the same price. So uh let's go ahead and implement those changes so we'll do we've already done the 60 bucks for the five by tens we'll do 90 bucks for the 10 by tens and 160 for the 10 by 20s so we switch back to our groups in store edge 10 by tens we're going to edit that we're going to make this new group 90 bucks all none of the attributes changed so all that'll be the same so we just save that And it should just take a moment to refresh. And then same thing with the two 10 by 20 groups. We'll just edit this. We'll put this new rate at 160. And save, and then do the same thing for the other 10 by 10, sorry, 10 by 20 group. So 10 by 20s. Oh yeah, this is the front and back drive up access. So let's edit that. We'll change this to 160. And we will save that. All right, so I think if we refresh again, these numbers might actually start making sense. There we go. All right, so now we have all the current pricing. So $60 for the five by tens, $90 standard, 
for the 10 by 10s, but the managed rate is going to be 104. 10 by 20s, it's 160 standard rate, and then 192 for the managed rate. And then uh, we didn't mess with the parking because we have availability. Uh, so we'll just leave that be for now. And this is a seasonal thing too. Everybody's out driving their campers, having fun. Eventually they'll come back. <laughs> and then we'll start pushing the, uh, for the campers and stuff, I would say push the, the yearly uh, payments on there. And then they could just have it for the whole year. Give them a month off, two months if they need to. Uh, but yeah, if you could sell it for the whole year, do that. <laughs> especially on the on this art this is a pretty remote facility so if we can get it i'll take it all right so now we're gonna we're gonna want to uh go into the yield management over here so the yield management is going to manage the tenants you already have uh versus the dynamic pricing so dynamic, dynamic pricing is for the empty units that you're gonna sell or rent. Uh, the yield management is for the tenants you have. So if we go, all of these are active right now. So the five by tens, 10 by tens and 10 by twenties. So if we go to edit one of them, let's just say the five by 10, it'll give you a graph and it'll show you what everyone is priced at. So 45 bucks, two rentals at this rate, one rental at 47, uh, 47 and a quarter, 47 and a quarter. Why are they the same? I don't know. And then this is how long they've been there. So these people have been here um, 28 months, uh, is that 25 months, 12 months, and two months. So uh, what we could see, why, why are they higher uh, and why are they so low? So they just came in, so they got the street rate. These people have been here a while. So let's see, scheduled increase plan. So it's customizable. So in six months, increase rent by 5%. Uh, and then I wonder why that's not reoccurring. See, it's good to double check everything. So normally we would choose reoccurring and then every six months increase by a set amount. So whatever that amount uh, may be. So, uh, you could change it by any amount you want. Uh, but if you want to bring everybody to the same level, you're going to want to do this uh, oh, like a one-time thing. So in one month, I don't think it lets you put zero. <laughs> uh, we want to increase them to a fixed rate. So if you want to get everybody on the same playing field, get everybody on the same uh, pricing structure, that's how you would do it. So uh, they're at 45, 47 uh, dollars. Our current rate is 60. So this is where you have to decide, uh, do I want to raise everybody to the street rate or do I want to you know, save them five bucks off the street rate because they've been loyal tenants for so, you know, whatever <laughs> your thinking is. Uh, for me, I would say put everybody at the street rate. Uh, if you want to give them a break, you know, maybe give them five bucks off, if anything. So if it's going for 60, give it to them for 55. And then they say, well, you know, if they I could just rent a new unit for 60 bucks. So, you know, give them five bucks off and maybe make them happy. <laughs> so basically you would just go in here, you would put their new rate. So I don't think it's gonna let me do the zero months, but we'll see what happens. It's probably gonna make it default to one. Oh yeah, review plan must be greater than zero. All right, so in one month, change them to a sixth rate of the fixed rate of sixty dollars. So we're gonna save that, and then we can see once we go back in what that did. So right here, uh, Alicia moving in on March eighteenth. Their current rate is 45 bucks. Their last increase was March 18th. Uh, 
their planned rate is 60 bucks. So the planned date is August 1st when it's going to take effect. Uh, I why... don't know why these don't have rate increases scheduled, <laughs> but you could change this stuff in the settings. Oh, that I know why now. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're in the settings, uh, where is that? You could set how long of a period there is uh, between, oh, it's probably yield management, between rate increases. Here we go. So the rate change letter, Right now it's set to 45 days. So 45 days before the new rate takes effect, the rate change letter will go out. And right now it's set that they won't have more than one rate increase within 120 days. So four months, I don't like that. I would change that to, what's the shortest month? 28 days, right? Uh, two, four, six, so 84 days. Uh, so it's the shortest three month period possible, which whatever. So you could set it to 90 or whatever you want. <laughs> so uh, basically once a quarter, it'll let me make a rate change if I need to. Uh, but so they'll, they'll lock in their rate for a minimum of three months. And then the rate change letter, I was sending it out 45 days prior to the rate increase, but uh, our invoices go out uh 10 days prior so they were getting a rate increase and then they were getting an invoice uh so i, I wanted to flip flop that <laughs> so they would get their invoice for the current month uh so right now uh it's april so what's today's day so in a, in a couple days they're going to be getting an invoice for may I don't want them to get confused. So they're going to get that invoice for May. It's going to, they're going to be at their normal rate. And then I'm going to change this to, you know, maybe 32 days prior to their rate increase. They're going to get a rate increase letter. So they're going to get their invoice for May. And then right before May, they're going to get another rate change letter. It'll say your rent for June is going to be X dollars now. So uh, hopefully creates less confusion because <laughs> they were getting a rate increase and then they were getting an invoice and they said, oh, they don't match up. So we have to give them, uh, it's, it's a month to month contract. So we have to let them know at least a month ahead of time that it's, it's going to change for the next month. So uh, that's how I got it. And it should get less confusion this way. So, and then this too, Stacy was talking about uh, how if you look at the rate they're charging, you know, sometimes it'll have some cents on the dollar. So they have this option here, round rates to the nearest dollar. I like choosing that. People like round numbers and it, it just makes things easier. So round units, or round unit rates to the nearest dollar. So if you have those reoccurring rate changes, you know, maybe it's 5% every X number of months, you're going to get change on the end. So round that to the nearest dollar and then you'll avoid that and it'll be less irritating for everybody. Uh, prepayments include rate increases in prepayment amounts. I personally don't like choosing that. Uh, if somebody's prepaying, it's usually for the time period. You know, they're like, okay, I want to, you know, they're not just saying here's, you know, here's 200 bucks, you know, let it ride. Let me know when it runs out. They don't say that. They say, oh, you know, I want to pay through December. How much do I owe you? So I don't include rate increases in the prepayment amounts uh, because every time somebody makes a prepayment, they say, hey, you know, I want to pay up until this date. How much does that cost? So I've told them how much that costs. So I, I don't want to go back on that and be like, oh, I lied, <laughs> you know? So I, I don't choose that. Uh, I wouldn't recommend putting that on, but you can run your business however you want. 
just know that you'll get some backlash if you click that on. And I mean, we don't have many prepayments anyway. I mean, a handful of tenants over our facilities prepay. So uh, I mean, it's to me, it's not worth the hassle of them. You know, just a handful of tenants getting mad at me. All right, commercial. So exclude commercial or business tenants from yield management. Uh, we don't have very many. And uh, of the ones we do have, <laughs> you know, it's usually someone in the office handling it and they can care less. I mean, they usually take the price increases better than, you know, just my regular tenants. So I wouldn't exclude commercial or business tenants from yield management. Uh, if you want to do that, you can do it per tenant from the tenant profiles. You, you have an option to exclude them. So I wouldn't make, so this makes it kind of like a blanket statement for the whole location. But if you ever run into that issue, I'd say just do it within the tenant profile. If, you know, if you're dealing with a electrician or a plumber or whatever it is, and you say, oh yeah, I'll, I'll lock that price in for you. You could do that within the tenant profile. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. So, uh, here we go. Let's save that. All right. So now we've sent the notices out uh, in the correct order, <laughs> and we've raised some uh, tenants' pricing so far. Oops, let's go back into the settings. There we go. Uh, where did that go? All right, so I think Hopefully I didn't put everybody to sleep, <laughs> but that's how we do it. I'm just going to have to go in uh, to the 10 by 10s and 10 by 20s and update those as well. So uh, j just to get the pricing correct for all those so I can get everybody on the same page. Uh, oh wait, let's go back in here and just check the five by 10s to see if they have dates on them now. To a fix rate. All right. So let's save that and see if this updates. Hmm. Sorry, I just want to see if this is going to update in here. Let's change this back to one. I'm probably giving storage a heart attack, changing everything so many times. <laughs> All right, so these two people will get a rate increase July 1st. And then everyone else, when it's their time, it'll show up here. But eventually we'll get everybody on the same rate. And the way this works now, uh, the one thing we've implemented, uh, actually just in the past couple of weeks, uh, we started using the mailhouse from Store Edge. I mean, the the pricing was was great. <laughs> I mean, it's not much more than a stamp to send the stuff out. Uh, let's see, oh, mailhouse over here. So it'll actually send out uh, the rate change template uh, for us. So when that rate change is generated, uh, I even forgot what I just put it at, 31 days before the rate change or 32, whatever I had it set at. Well, once it's generated within storage, it'll automatically get sent to the mailhouse. Mailhouse will send it, uh, they'll, they'll print it, they'll pack it, they'll stamp it, they'll set it for me. And uh, I would call storage for the pricing. I can't remember what it was, but for, Bonnie to do that in my office, it was probably costing me more to buy the paper, have Bonnie actually sit there, print it, 
because she has to print the letter and then she also has to print the envelope, stamp it, and then she has to drive to the post office to actually get it out. Uh, you also have the options here to send these certified. Uh, I, I don't need them sent out certified, <laughs> but check your local and state laws to see if that's something you have to do. Uh, or if you just want to, you know, cover all your bases. Uh, but there isn't an, obviously an added cost to send things certified. Uh, so for most of these things, so the rate change, uh, some people ask for invoices, all that I'm using the mailhouse for as well. And then if we go into a tenant, uh, let's see, someone with a unit. We've also got mailhouse enabled for ad hoc documents. So if I want to send a document, I can click mailhouse here. Uh, if you want to send out your change of ownership, basically any of these templates you could send out through the mailhouse. Uh, the one we probably send out the most is the, well, recently anyway, is the, uh, the missing information letter. So if we have a tenant, you know, maybe we're missing their, a copy of their ID or, uh, if they choose to use their own insurance, maybe we're missing the declarations page from their insurance. We just have everything on this missing information document that Bonnie's uh, made and she'll just send it out to them. So obviously we need one piece of information that we're not missing and that's their mailing address. <laughs> so as long as we have that, we'll send this. If we're missing their mailing address, she has an email uh, with basically the same information in there and then we'll email them. Uh, but before we do all of that, we just we do try to contact them via phone first. Uh, so try to call their number and storage actually lets us text right from storage as well. So we do that. I think we've got two or three minutes left. Uh, don't know if I confused anybody or if you have questions, but either ring in or type something in the, the chat and I'm here for you for at least the next few minutes. And then also Fridays, you can always book time with me and I can go through uh, anything uh, facility management related. Or if you're having trouble with the deal analyzer too, I guess you can either email me or call in. Okay, any questions? Jennifer, unmute yourself oh, and ask. Go ahead. Oh, pizza. Oh, thank you, Ariel Lynn. Yes, that's my uh, my link. <laughs> so um, the facility that we are um, looking ahead, to Jennifer. buy. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Stacy, your speaker's not on. I can hear you. <laughs> okay. Um, the facility we're looking to buy has um, they have one person who pays like a half a year in advance. And so he, the owner gives like a $200 discount or something because he's paying in advance. Do you guys do any sort of things like that? Or what do you, how do you handle when people want to pay in advance? He travels a lot. So like when he's in town, he's like, okay, here, I'll pay you now. Yeah. They, so for those, yeah, I'll take money when I can get it. <laughs> you get a discount though. If they do that, you uh, a discount. Yeah. Like if they pay the year, we'll probably give them a month off. And then, you know, make, make it proportional for however long they want to pay. You know, if they want to pay for the quarter, you know, maybe just give them, you know, half a month or a quarter month off, something like that. But I'd, I'd work something out ahead of time because to figure it out each and every time someone wants to make a prepayment, <laughs> like, no, like if, you know, maybe just make a little matrix in Excel, like pay this many months, get this percentage off or this amount off and uh and does storage you can, you, allow yeah, for storage that? they'll let you put promotions in store edge uh i haven't used them in a while just because everybody wants storage we don't really need promotions <laughs> so <laughs> but uh I, let's see if i can even find it in here but yeah there is you can make pr promo codes that you could define what those promo codes do. <laughs> so, you know, if somebody, you could put like, you know, uh, six month, one year, 
two year promo code, something like that. So when someone calls in and they say, oh, hey, I want to prepay for the year, you could just apply that, you know, one year promo code when they, before they make that payment and it should auto adjust uh, to whatever they're trying to do. Uh, but then with that too, so you want to let them know <laughs> that whatever discount they're getting is on the last month, <laughs> right? So they're, they're not, you know, if they prepay the year, they're not getting this month free and then moving out in two months and getting all their money back. No, they're getting their last month free. <laughs> so if they, yeah, because it, it, it'll just clear up any confusion if they do move out early. They're like, oh, well, I moved out two months early. And if you spread my discount over the 12 months, then I should be getting this much back. And you say, no, your, your discount was your last month is free. You, you don't get anything, you know? <laughs> so yeah, you can put it in, you know, like pay, pay 12 months, get the 13th month free or pay 11, get the 12th month free, something like that. But just, yeah, just make sure all their, their free stuff is at the end. So they use up their money by the time they get there. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. And I would not have thought of that. And it's the facilities to full occupancy, like he doesn't okay. need to make meals, but he just decides, well, if they're going to pay me in advance, I, I'll do it. So, Yeah, because, and that's it. It alleviates your headaches. You don't have to worry about finding payments. And, you know, if they're in it for the long haul, I mean, that, yeah. I mean, some of these tenants, how do I look on here? I mean, so, some of our tenants have been there years and years and years and years. <laughs> so. Uh, and yeah, they just they just roll with it. Uh, let me see, where is it? Oh yeah, two plus years. We have uh, over twenty tenants in there, two plus years. So yeah, if you, if you can hold on to people, that the longer they've been there, the less likely they are to move. Even if you know, even with the increases, <laughs> they don't want to move their stuff. They haven't seen it in five years. They don't. <laughs> Okay, we need to button up. Yes. So yeah, if you need to meet with Pete, you can. He's he's available on Fridays. Okay, you have the link for that, and hopefully that gave you some insight on like what Pete does. That's his job. So he keeps an eye out on competition and make sure that we're always competitive and make sure our rates are competitive. And you guys need to be doing this as well too. Okay. All right, we'll continue this um, in the next couple of weeks. And uh, I appreciate you guys uh, hopping on. And again, I'm available on Mondays and uh, I'll see you guys soon. Okay. Thanks, Pete. Thank you all. Have a great day. Take care. Okay, bye.